Also, the Lisas were ill, so pray that God would be with them. Continue to lift up Sister Friend as she's in rehab, recovery, trying to figure out what's going to go on in her future. We want to pray for Brother Tommy has the shingles, and any of you have had that, that's a very painful situation. So pray for Brother Tommy tonight that God would touch his body. We want to lift up Nick Garrison. He got uh, food poisoning that transitioned into a severe infection. He's a diabetic, and he needs a touch from God. Yes. They come on Sunday morning. Um, she's got real short bobbed hair. And they got Katie. So they've been coming. They're from Oxford. So they've been starting to come. So pray God can move. And this could be a witness and a testimony. So let's pray for Nick tonight that God would touch him. Unspoken need. I saw some people had a couple hands up. And God can handle more than one need. Is that not correct? He can handle all of them. Let's go to him in prayer tonight. Father, you see our arms and our hands raised tonight. God asking that you would move. Father, we're asking for these in need of a physical touch, God. Some of them in serious situations, God, where they need the great physician to touch their physical body. Father, that you would move, that your perfect will would be accomplished in them tonight. Father, as a testimony, as a witness of your power, of your authority. Father, we pray this night, God, for every unspoken need represented. God, you see the burdens, you know the hearts. Father, you know the heaviness of life that these bear tonight. Father, but we ask, God, that you would be the provider, be the Jehovah Jireh, be the Jehovah Shalom, be that to us. Father, for a testimony and a witness of your authority, the testimony and a witness of your control. Father, we give you the glory. We know you're in control. We know you're on the throne. And we give you praise tonight for it. We give you glory tonight for it. We thank you tonight for it. In your name, to you be the glory. To you be be the honor to you be the praise in your name i pray and let the church say amen and you may be seated tomorrow night 6 30 the golden pillars will be assembling here at the church and if you're not aware of who the golden pillars are that's anybody that's you or your spouse is equal or over the age of 60 so come down tomorrow night at 6.30. I think there might be a sign-up sheet out there. Saturday, ladies, you have a cookout at 5 o'clock. There's also a sign-out sheet for that, so be aware of that. And then our Spanish service will be at 6 on Saturday. Brother Holly will be ministering to our Spanish church. So let's pray that God would move in that service. And then Sundays, we've been announcing this. It's our promotion Sunday of our kids that are moving up. They're back getting ready to go back to school outside so in here they're gonna be moving up in school another grade so come Sunday morning um, brother Holly will be ministering and there's only the a.m. service because then at three o'clock there is a carnival so it's kind of a back to school type thing so there will be no p.m. service on Sunday and then anybody that has a move the missions can that is due on August the 16th. So we need to get those turned in so that we can turn those into headquarters. If our ushers will come at this time, we're going to take up our offering. Our scripture comes from Deuteronomy 12, 11. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall you bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which you vow unto the Lord. Let's pray that God would bless this offering tonight. Father, we are so thankful, God, that we are able to come into this house, that we do have a sanctuary to assemble in. We pray, God, that you would anoint that which is given tonight, God, this tithe and this offering and an appreciation and a thankfulness, God, of how you moved and you blessed in our lives and have provided. Touch and anoint as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord, bless as you give tonight.
out tonight with an old hymn, Amazing Grace, and I was driving home the other day, and I turned my radio on, and I don't listen to the radio. It's very unusual for me to turn it on. And they were singing Amazing Grace. And as I was listening, all of a sudden they started singing a verse I had never heard. So I thought, well, somebody has modified it, kind of like how the course has been added, chains are gone. So I thought, well, somebody just added a verse. So I, I wanted to get those words, so I started Googling. And I, unbeknownst to me, Amazing Grace has six verses. And the fourth one that we sing all the time was not one of the original six. They don't know who came up with that fourth verse. But apparently in the 1920-something, there was a choir that sang Amazing Grace, and they sang the three original one, and they add this fourth one. And that's what every hymnal has, is those four. Well, tonight, I only add one more of the original, so we're going to put that in there, so don't get it. It's the same melody, so you should be able to follow along. But I like the words, so we're going to try that to, tonight.
clap our hands and praise him tonight Lord you're worthy hallelujah praise God nothing like the golden oldies let me say it again there's nothing like the golden oldies I'm not talking about the golden antiques I'm not talking about the old folks. I'm talking about these songs, some of the old songs that a lot of us cut our teeth on years ago when we first, amen, came into the church. What a mighty Savior we have. Amen. And uh, thank you for adding that other verse. That's good. Appreciate that. You know, there's a lot of songs that uh, if you would get the book out, you'd realize that there's a lot more verses to the songs that we normally sing. You know, we got the ones that we'll sing, but then there's actually other verses to it. And uh, so uh, that doesn't hurt us to do that every now and then. Ephesians, you will, the first chapter this evening, Ephesians 1. We are in a warfare. We are in a, a battle uh, for our very lives. And not just our life, but for everybody that we could take this gospel to, amen, I believe their lives also are in jeopardy. The day and hour that we live in is, is crucial that you and I really become the warrior that God needs us to be in this day and time. Amen. And uh, uh, I really, I was thinking today as I came home, uh, my granddaughter was at the house and uh uh, you know, she's a tornado. And uh, Sister Moody was at the house. And so uh, I come downstairs and, and she uh, takes my one hand and she spins around and she takes my other hand and leads me up our stairs and she turns loose and runs up the steps and she goes running around and runs around and, and I'm like, what, what are you looking for, Mammy? What are you looking for? And uh, I thought she was saying to me, uh, money. And, uh, I, and I, I didn't hear it right, so I kind of, you know, said, what are you looking for, Remy? And I thought she said again, money. And then she ran off. And so it didn't make sense to me. So I, I kind of went up there, followed her, and here she come flying past me again down the steps. And I didn't realize it, but Sister Moody was at the house. And she had went to the restroom and it closed the door. I didn't know that. So when I was coming, she come down, Sister Moody opened the door, and there was Remy giving her a big hug. Well, I realized she was looking for Moody. <laughs> Not money, but Moody. <laughs> Praise God. So when Sister Moody comes over to the house, my wife and her will put some preaching on. And today they had Sister Vesta Mangan on preaching their Mother's Day service. And uh, 95, probably in that range, and she stood up there and gripped that pulpit and just started preaching away and ministering to that congregation. And I thought to myself, I said, this is what it's about. In other words, you can retire from your job, you can retire from a lot of things, but you should never say, I'm retiring from winning people or ministering to people or working in the kingdom of God. We never retire from that, right? How many agrees with that tonight? How many realize it is a battle? It's an ongoing warfare that we are in, and you don't retire from that. I guess, I guess you can say dying is retiring. So basically, that's the only way you're going to 
you're going to retire from what we're doing in this world, but then you're just going to go up a little higher, and uh, we're going to be in the kingdom of God. So Ephesians, the first chapter, and I've got quite a bit to say, um, and uh, probably a few weeks to do it in. So uh, I, I, I want to, I want to uh, uh, once again say thank you for uh, all those that uh, 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 helped out, Brother Bobby, Brother Howard, uh, you know, Brother, Brother uh, Himes, and they're, they're off on a venture today. They left today, so pray for them. Uh, they are going over, and I guess it's their, it's their anniversary. It's like their honeymoon, right, that they never had, 10 years. And so they're on their way to Italy, Italia. Sister Simone back here is praising God for that. And then uh, they're going to take a cruise, and he's got some stuff scheduled to go to Ephesus, and I'm going to be in Ephesians tonight, so uh, Ephesus, and I said, you got to send me pictures, and you got to, you know, he's going to do some, uh, uh, a, a tour, a, I don't want to say a scholarly tour, but that kind of thing where they'll give you a tour and tell you all about it, and that's exciting, I'm excited about that, and I'm sure he'll bless you with that when he gets back. But the book of Ephesians here in the New Testament, uh, they, they, people and those commentary have likened it unto the book of Joshua in the Old Testament because the believers are people who have uh, here ceased like those in Joshua from aimless wandering and now they have started uh, uh, warring and uh, I believe God has promised them as well as us uh, uh, that that he's going to do great things in our life but here's the deal Amen. He's promised us victory, but it's not necessarily victory in the way that he's just going to do it all. I believe he shows us here in Ephesians that we will have to fight some battles to claim the victories that we're wanting. Amen. It's just not going to happen. Amen. But I believe victory is assured by God, right? Do you believe that tonight? Amen. Why is that? Because I believe he's equipped us well, and that's what we're going to do. Now, I have a lot of verses here. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 23. So if you will allow... Uh, if, if you don't mind, we'll just pray and I'll let you sit down. We've been standing for quite a bit here and I will go through it. Lord God, we thank you once again. Amen. For your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness that you have so graciously shown to us. Amen. We thank you for your presence that is in this place tonight. We thank you for the worship of your people that has set the table for your word. And I pray, God, that you would minister to us in a powerful way this evening. Strengthen us. And help us, Lord God, be determined to be all you want us to be in this, in this army that we are in. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray and let everybody say amen. amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. So here, Paul begins Ephesians by talking about the resources of God. So in verse 1, we begin to read, Paul said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful, everybody say faithful, in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Verse 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being 
predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. And verse 23, which is his body. Which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord for the reading of the word. So. The reason God can bless us is that He is just simply a blessed God. He's not frail. He's not impoverished. He has every resource at His disposal. Amen. The devil, understand, the devil doesn't own anything. And here's my point tonight. The devil, if he doesn't own anything, I'm going to be sure he's not going to own me. The only reason why he will own somebody is because they just let him take over. Amen. So I'm not going to let that happen. I, I'm, I'm going to fight that. I'm going to fight, amen, the good fight of faith. And I'm going to stay strong in that. Amen. You know, God, God you know, he's like a parent. He's like a parent, if I could say it that way. He's not, only, he's not only good to us, amen, but he's good for us. Amen. A parent that says that their child is their best friend has messed up already. Because as a parent, we aren't called to be their best friend. We're called to be their parent. Which means as a parent, sometimes it's good, and sometimes the kids say it was bad. But usually when they get older, they say, it was good. Amen. So we understand that. Sometimes he doesn't give us everything all at once for reasons a lot of times we don't know. But when the blessing comes, I think we need to be mature enough to handle it. Amen. And let God just do what God can do. Why? Because the Bible says, the Bible says here, God hath. Everybody say hath. He hath blessed us, Brother Bobby. Now, you that are in school, you understand that word hath means past tense. Everybody say past tense. So he's already blessed us. We already have access to the resources in heaven because he already hath blessed us. Praise God. So the blessings of God, they are a finished work. Amen. From God's viewpoint... We possess, we already possess our promised land right now. It's not future tense. We possess it now. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say now. Amen. So really, actually what he's saying here is that all the blessings we can ever receive from God have already been created. They're there. Right? Amen. So, so. When you, when, you, when you understand that this is the purpose of God and this is where it's at, then, then you've got to step into those possessions. 
Amen. So, so Pastor, how, how do I obtain them? Well, let me, let me give you. Number one, you've got to believe. Believing that God has what we need. Believing that he has what we need. Well, it doesn't look like it right now, Pastor. you got to believe, amen, that he has. Amen. He's already blessed us, right? He hath blessed us, past tense. So he has that in reserve. He has that stored up. So we've got to believe, first, that God has what we need. Second of all, we've got to take what he has promised us. We've got to reach for that. Because most believers spend their entire lives reading if we might say the will, or going over the contract, but we never, we never live in the promises that God has decreed for us. You can read the will all you want to. It just, it's just something that says what's going to happen after you die. You can have a contract that just states what's going to transpire. Amen. But God says, look, I've already blessed you. I have blessed you. I've got it here. You just need to believe that they're here, and then you need to come and get them. You need to pursue them, right? Everybody say pursue. Amen. Don't get caught up in all this other stuff. Realize that they're the promises of God. They have been decreed. And we need to reach out and obtain them. Amen. Why is that? Because they aren't willing to fight. Why, people kind of settle for, for that. Amen. They're not willing to fight the necessary spiritual battles that are there. Amen. Because in reality, it's going to take fighting. Amen. You've got to become a warrior if you are going to uh, obtain the riches uh, that are beyond measure in Christ Jesus. Right. You've got to be willing to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Do we believe that tonight? Do we believe that? Amen. You know, I, I don't, I, I, Brother Howard, I don't think God, I, you know, sometimes as parents we can spoil our kids. Now, it's good. You feel good doing it at the moment, but it doesn't mean it's the best thing for them. Amen. So, so sometimes it's, it, they're, it's good for them to know that if they're going to have a car, they got to work for it. Or if they're going to put gas in a car, they got to pay for it. Amen. It's going to be uh, by the sweat of their brow that they're going to have some things. Because if you ruin them when they're young, they're not going to do so good when they get old. I just added that. Because that's true. It's true. Amen. Our blessings are first and foremost spiritual blessings. Amen. But when we focus on them, spiritual blessings have a way of working into other realms of everyday living and beginning to produce uh, an abundant life in our lives. In fact, Paul was talking in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse 18. He said this, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Everybody say temporal. temporal. They're temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You believe that tonight? Amen. Amen. Eternal. Spiritual blessings are eternal. Eternal. So they, if you can look at it this way, they existed before we did. And when we became the children of God, God deposited something in us. He, he deposited them into our spiritual, if I could say it this way, our spiritual bank account. Hear me tonight. Everything we need to live for God is already in us by His Spirit. If you possess the Spirit of God tonight, God has filled you and filled your spiritual bank account up with his blessings. Now I'm not, I'm not talking about the prosperity doctrine tonight. I'm just talking about your spiritual man. You are being, you have been filled with the Spirit of God. He has deposited these things into your account. And so everything we need to live for God is already in us by his Spirit. And when you look at natural blessings, natural blessings, they're only temporary. What we have is only temporary. Amen. You know, we're not like the children of Israel in the wilderness where our shoes lasted, our clothes lasted. No. Amen. You're going, your shoes are going to wear out. Your clothes are going to wear out. Right? Your homes, you've got to maintain them. They're going to wear out. 
Amen. Natural blessings are only temporary, but the spiritual blessings are forever. You believe that tonight? If all you're doing is living for the temporal, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Amen. Because you've got to look beyond that and you've got to look into the realm of the heavenlies, what God has done for you. Amen. The spiritual things He's, he's uh, uh, placed in your life, those are eternal things. They last. That's why God never, uh, if I could say, goes into, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, uh, well, just say, He's, he's never in emergency uh, situations, He's never in the emergency mode. Amen. He's already done everything that we need Him to do to deliver us. Amen. So we're not waiting on, on our deliverance, you know, from a standpoint of, of, of until God chooses to give it. Amen. I believe God's already, we possess it now. Amen. But we got to believe and we got to reach for it. Amen. Uh, we got to fight for it. That's the bottom line. And this is what I'm talking about, what I'm starting about tonight. In Ephesians, this is, a, this is a book, and we'll go about it. The armor of God, all this kind of stuff. Because it is where God says, look, as a church, you're going to have to fight. Just like the children of Israel, amen, back in the Old Testament, they had to fight. That was the whole problem. That's what got them wandering around the wilderness, is because they were scared to death to get in a fight. See, after all God did for them, after showing them the, His miraculous power over and over again, bringing them out of the land of Egypt, but yet they still got the place where they fear gripped them, and they're like, oh man, these people, they're, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. And those ten spies that, that, that just kind of pulled the story out, and, and they believed it, and the people believed it. Amen. I, I wonder how many of them discussed, why did we believe that? Because it has cost us dearly, and now we'll never see the promised land. Amen. Understand that. God says, look, I'm not, you, you just got to be determined that you're going to fight. It's already done. You got to take possession of it. Amen. Don't wait on your deliverance. I've got you your deliverance. You just need to fight for it. And so when you look at the, when you look at, we, we talked about it before, but when you look at Ephesus, it was an incredibly powerful and wealthy city uh, in that ancient world uh, in Paul's time. Um, when you read about it, it'll tell you they had marble streets. Uh, we don't have marble streets. Um, they had mosaic sidewalks. Uh, they had a massive temple to Diana that was considered one of the wonders of the Greek world. Uh, it was a busy uh, port. Um, it had a popular uh, athletic arena. It had one of the finest libraries of the first century, um, and the, 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 the villas were filled with uh, uh, artwork and tapestries and silks and uh, all kinds of stuff, exotic birds and uh, animals. Uh, even today, uh, the uh, restored Colosseum at Ephesus is considered one of the finest performing arts buildings in the world. And so it was into this influential city of approximately a half a million people of that day and time, that Apostle Paul brought the gospel and planted a church in the midst of all of that. And we understand that uh, he worked longer there than any other place that he had been to, staying there for roughly three and a half years, according to Acts 19. And it was later in his ministry, he called the elders of, of the Ephesians church to meet him in Miletus and exhorted them to be vigilant against the inevitable opposition from within and without that would come against the church after his death. Paul prepped them and was warning them and enlightening them about the battles that they were going to fight after he was gone. So let's look at Acts chapter 20, verses 28 to 32, and notice what he says. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves 
enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Amen. He took the time to tell the Ephesians elders, look, when I'm gone, this is what you're going to face. So Paul is trying, basically, he's trying to, to uh, 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 set together a, a defense for those that would come in to try to destroy. And he said, the believers, you're going to be under attack. And this is the reason that I'm, 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 I'm talking to you uh, in the book of Ephesians. This is the reason why I'm setting it up for you, uh, uh, elders of Ephesus. You need to know that this is what you're going to face. Contrary to the experience of many religious people that we face today, becoming a Christian is not like joining a social club. A lot of places it means that. What church do you go to? I go to this church or I go to this church. This church on this avenue or that avenue. And people automatically equate, well, that's where a lot of these people go and that you know, and this is because you associate with the church. Look, church is not a social place to gather. We do social things. We have picnics or parties or whatever like that. But that's not the primary reason for church. The primary reason for church is for God's people to come together to worship Him in spirit and truth, uh, see a move of God so other people can come in. Let me say it this way, it's not a social club, amen, you just don't pay your dues and you're a part of the church, right, amen, praise God. Once in a while, we have to realize that we have different things, amen, but we need to realize becoming a Christian is the biblical sense of the word is more like enlisting in the army. Remember that when you was a kid? We're in the Lord's army. Do you guys sing? Does the kids still sing that? I'm in the Lord's army. I forgot the words. Because you'll find out serving God immediately, not too long, that a conflict is raging. And you're going to have to fight that because it has, folks, listen to me. Our determination has eternal consequences how we respond to it not just for us but for other people that's why our how we engage in a church service matters because you want people to feel the presence of God I don't want anybody to ever leave the same way they came I want them coming with a need I want them leaving with an answer or coming with a, a you know not knowing if if this is a church that they want to go to but but all of a sudden they feel the the presence of God is something different than they've, that, they, that they have felt uh, than anywhere else. Amen. I want people to understand that, that this is an intense warfare and we've got we've to battle on, right? How many understands that to be true? Amen. Because why? Because I'm going to tell you something right now. I listen, I've listened to a lot of uh, military leaders. And it's amazing that you can have some that uh, will believe this and others that believe that you got some military leaders that have been successful on the battlefield, and you've got others that have been failures on the battlefield. Right? Amen. And the soldiers just kind of have to go along and hope they got a good leader. Amen. But we have a commander that is brilliant. Everybody say, he's brilliant. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus is brilliant. Amen. He is a brilliant strategist. Amen. He, uh, he uh, is, is, is a, a great warrior, and, and I believe uh, we have to realize that he's already defeated the enemy. Satan has been defeated. But we have to, we are the church. 
And we have to enforce every day what he has already defeated as we sit in the trenches of this warfare that we're in right now. Amen. Because understand that he's already won the victory in the heavenlies. But we're still fighting a battle down here. And we're going to do that until the trump of God sounds, right? Amen. So, so uh, the book of Ephesians just kind of comes along and teaches us about the church and how we are equipped with vast spiritual weaponry in order to accomplish the very task that God has set us out to accomplish. And, and what remains is for us, you and I, amen, to, uh, uh, you know, to receive our orders and fight on and take up our weapons. And folks, we got to do it. How do you do it? We pray. We pray, we read the word of God, we storm the gates of hell because victory is, our, is ours if we fight for it. The children of Israel realized how detrimental it was when they decided to listen to people that, that, that wasn't giving them good advice. And it cost them their lives, but it cost them 40 years wandering around the wilderness when they could have been already uh, partaking of the promised land. You know, Understand, uh, Caleb was 40, uh, you know, he was 85 when he went back into the promised land. Amen. But yet he had said then, I want this mountain. And when he went back at that age, he took that. That's my inheritance. That's what I want. Amen. We've got to fight. The victory is ours. Amen. So it's serious training. Amen. For serious Christians. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, are you serious about this? Are you serious about this? Because if we're going to be victorious, Brother Howard, we've got to be serious about it. Right? If we're not serious about it, we're going to falter and we're going to fail. We'll become delusioned. Amen. We, we, will, we will give up because we'll feel like the fight is too much or it's costing us too much. In reality, God's already said, the battle's yours. You know, you're going to win the battle. You just got to fight it. You, you, just, got to, you just got to become a warrior and you, and you got to get out there, pick up the weapons and fight. I'm with you. You know, Jesus, when he healed the woman in Luke 13, the woman that was bowed over for 18 years, Jesus didn't heal the woman uh, as much as he just made known to her what she already possessed in the covenant. So let's look at Luke 13, verses 12 and then verse 16. The Bible says, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and he said to her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Thou art loosed from thine infirmity. I mean, he just spoke it out. I mean, what infirmity could stand against his spoken word? None. Death could not even stand against it. When he stood at Lazarus' tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth. Didn't matter. Death had to had relinquished its grip from that. Verse 16 says, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan hath bound, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? I mean, this is her inheritance. This is what we've spoken. Amen. Jesus said, called her and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from this infirmity. I don't know about you, but the process of, a, of, a, of, a, of maturing in Christ is simply learning how to work out what God has already placed in us. Man. Spiritual maturity is living from spiritual reality that is resident in us through the Holy Ghost. Instead of living according to our outward circumstances, which that's where we falter and that's where we fail, is when our eyes get on the waves of life and get on the boisterous wind of life and the circumstances that are happening in our life. That's where we mess up. Amen. That's the way it is with us. You see, when we receive the Holy Ghost, if we just allow God's Spirit to begin to work in us, he will lead us into those new places, those new capabilities, and those new possibilities. Amen. And I feel like if we do this, 
Every seat in this house is going to be filled. Every chair. Amen. The back wall, the side walls, the balcony. Amen. I believe that that's what God wants to do when we become united and we begin to fight together and we choose to fight this battle. We understand that it's going to be hotly contested, but yet we are going to fight it with everything that's within us to see God do great things in our life. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Amen. I don't know everything God has planned for me. I'm, 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 I'm 63. I don't know everything that God still has planned for me. But you know what? Amen. I want to find it. I think it will be awesome to be able to find those things, those nuggets, if I might say, still at my age, what God can do. Because, listen, no other believer possesses more of God than, than you and I possess right now. But some people have learned to walk in what God has given them. A lot better than maybe some of us have. And so when the enemy comes against us, when the devil comes against us, amen, we need to recognize that he's not only challenging where you are, amen, he is troubled over what has been given you or what has been deposited in you for your future. So if he can stop you now, he feels like he can stop your future. If he can hinder you now, he feels like he can stop the promises of God in your that you that you've already that's already designated for you for your future. Now, I don't know how about you feel about that, but I feel like if God's got some things for me, I want to see this thing through, right? Because you see this, the enemy, the devil is intimidated by the church. Amen. Everybody say that. He's intimidated by me. Amen. Amen. He's intimidated by our destiny. And, and he's, he's, he doesn't want us to possess it. So that's why. And Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. He said, but as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard. Neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So understand this. Turn to your neighbor and say, God has chosen you. God has chosen you. So if nobody, if there's not one person on the face of the earth that shows any love toward you or has not valued you in the slightest way, I believe this verse right here is the one you need to hang on your refrigerator. Amen. Or hang on the mirror when you get ready in the morning. Because this verse shatters all the rejection by telling you that God chose you even before he created the heavens and the earth. He's the one that says, I love you, I want you. You are wanted by me. I love you. Amen. And so no matter what anybody else does, no matter what anybody else says, I have a God that chose me, I have a God that loves me, I have a God that wants me. So I say praise the Lord. Praise God. I don't know how you feel tonight in, in your spiritual walk with God. I won't be able to finish this, so I'm going to leave it right here. But let me stop and tell you something right now. I don't know where you're at spiritually, but let me encourage you, amen, to realize that God is here. All he's waiting on is for you and I to just pick up the weapons of his warfare. Because they're the ones that are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. 
It's nothing I can do. It's nothing that I can make. It's nothing that I have. It's all about what he has. And if I pick up his weapons and I walk in his way and I yield myself to him, I know that whatever warfare I get in, the enemy's not strong enough. He's already been defeated, right? He's already been defeated. And that I'm going to be victorious because God, amen, is with me. And if God be for us, isn't that what the scripture said? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who? Who? Amen. This is not our battle. Amen. It's the Lord's battle. It's good versus evil, but we are in this war. And you and I must fight the good fight of faith so that we can see a great miraculous thing happen in the days to come. I don't know how you feel about it, but that's exactly the way I feel. Amen. Because I want God to do great and mighty things, and I believe He's going to do that. Amen. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to subscribe to, uh, uh, you know, why is me, you know. Why is me? Why is Gary? Yeah, I don't feel like it tonight. Why do we do that for? You know, sometimes when we get in the when we get in the midst of the valley, we just need to strike up a song. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Praise God for saving me. Amen. Before long, you'll be up out of the mully grubs. You'll be feeling the blessings of God, and you'll feel a new uh, uh, power resonating within you. <clears throat> Energy that will just kind of lift you up, and you're able to fight it out. Let's stand together. Amen. Why is it important? Amen. Amen. Say it with me. God has chosen us. Now make it personal. God has chosen me. Say it. God has chosen. Say it again. God has chosen me. God has chosen me. God has chosen. God has chosen us. And he's chosen us for such a time as this. Amen. To do a great work for God in this end time. Amen. He didn't say it was going to be easy. But if we fight this warfare, he didn't say you're going to be uh, injury free or wounds free. Because sometimes, Brother Howard, that's part of the process. We're going to get wounded. We're going to get injured. We're going to face those moments. And, but that's when we just get strong. And we go into the place of prayer. Amen. And let God begin to work on us and move in our lives. Praise God. Lord God, we thank you for this day this opportunity that we've had tonight to, amen, to come in your house of worship. And Lord, not only just lift you up in song, but also, amen, receive encouragement in your word. And I pray, God, even though we weren't able to finish it tonight, God, the weeks to come, Lord, uh, that you will uh, somehow undergird us and let us become strong, realizing Amen, what is transpiring in this day and time that we live. We need to be the best that we can be, amen, till you come for your church. Let us be prepared for that moment when the trump sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive remain are going to be caught up together to meet them in the air and so shall we ever be with you. So bless us tonight. Lead us and guide us, amen. The doors of opportunity that, that open, let us walk through them with boldness. Amen with your word of God. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everybody say amen.